so yes, so the title of the project is an ePortfolio Strategy to Enhance Student Learning and Assessment and Staff Professional Development. And the partner institutions are Dublin Institute of Technology, the Institute of Technology Blanchardstown, the Institute of Technology Tala and Hibernia College. So the steering group was set up and um, there was a member from each of the participating institutions. So there's Dr. Francis Boylan, Daniel McSweeney, Margaret Keane, Dara Cassidy and myself, Orla Lachlan, as project coordinator. <coughs> so just to give you a brief overview of the project, um, the project seeks to create an ePortfolio framework that will enable and encourage academic staff to incorporate ePortfolios into their programmes in order to empower students, allow for more authentic forms of assessment and foster a student-centred approach to learning. So the, in the framework, we're considering appropriate ePortfolio organisational principles and reflective approaches. We're looking at the production of exemplars and guidelines and the exploration of ePortfolio systems and models appropriate to the higher education and student context. So resources, guidelines, exemplars and training materials to support these approaches will be created and made available on the ePortfolio Hub website. So just to take a look at the project outcomes, um, firstly, we were organising and hosting an ePortfolio conference, which took place in DIT from the 21st to the 23rd of March this year. And the title of the conference was ePortfolios in Ireland, What Now, Where Next? The next thing then was to develop an ePortfolio framework. So that's really gathering all of the project research, pulling it together into an easy to follow guide for use when developing an ePortfolio. And thirdly, we were to launch and create and launch a project website, which we entitled the ePortfolio Hub. And this was really to be a central repository where all of the set of ePortfolio approaches and the associate resources will be available to students, academic staff and higher education institutions. So to take a look at the outcomes of the project and what we've completed so far, um, the, one of the first tasks of the, of the group was to develop and create the ePortfolio Hub, which is the website. Um, and let me just see if I can bring you in to take a look at it. So yeah, so this was really initially to create awareness and develop awareness of the project and also to promote and launch the ePortfolio conference. And um, on this, we, so far, we've got a very range of ePortfolio event. So this was really to promote the conference. Um, so we had kind of how to register, the program outline, keynote speakers, and then the day, each day speakers. And ultimately, we have uploaded presentation resources and all of the video recordings from the event as well. So just to give you a few statistics on the traffic to the site, um, so so far since we've launched it, we've had quite a number of visitors, nearly 1,391, and the views have been about 5,578. And there's been certain, all of the pages have been viewed, but there's been certain pages that have been viewed more than others, which is really to do with the promotion of the portfolio event, which was the programme and the portfolio event details. And then refers to the portfolio site have mainly been DIT, Twitter, and again, Google search engine, which kind of reflects the promotion of the event and how we did that. So to promote the event, we set up um, a Twitter page, which is at ePortfolio Hub, and we also set up a Facebook page, ePortfolio Hub. And we found the Twitter page particularly good for kind of um, developing awareness of the event and the project, kind of making connections to people, and definitely promoting the project. And at the event, um, kind of d encouraging discussion and collaboration as well. So the ePortfolio conference itself um, took place in DIT from the 21st to the 23rd of March. And the focus of this three-day event was to kind of share learning and practice about ePortfolio use. And it was centered around three central themes. So day one was a focus on planning, day two was a focus on process, and day three was a focus on product. And international speakers, such as Dr. Helen Barrett and Helen Beetham, uh, gave the keynote addresses. And then various speakers from higher education institutions throughout the country. Um, as Karina mentioned earlier, she presented at it. And um, they all presented on their kind of experience of using ePortfolios. So topics covered included ePortfolio projects, tools and platforms, the use of ePortfolios for assessment and reflective practice, and also the role that ePortfolios can play in digital identity and career development. So during the conference, we used the Twitter hashtag ePortfolioHub16, and that created a lot of discussion and collaboration during the conference, um, so much so that we were a trending topic in Ireland on day three. 
And also, um, there's been a very favourable feedback from the conference with various comments on Twitter, and also from the feedback survey that we sent out to respondents. Um, so overall, they did rate the ePortfolio event as meeting and exceeding their expectations. And a lot of them were, the majority of them were very satisfied with the content and the length of the event, etc. So after the event, um, we uploaded the ePortfolio presentations and all of the video recordings that we took at the event and any associated resources. So we, we uploaded those to the, act, to the actual website as a record of the event and also to kind of to share it to a wider audience that weren't available to, weren't able to attend the event. During the portfolio conference, we used that as an opportunity to gather a lot of resources that would help to inform the framework, the portfolio framework itself. So we undertook to um, conduct some several video interviews with some of the speakers at the event. And this was really to uh, get some experience from, from individuals who had experience of using ePortfolios themselves or within a programme. And it was to really to get them to share their experience and offer any insights that they had about using ePortfolios. And this occurred over the three days of the conference. And also we had think tank sessions. So every afternoon of the conference we held a think tank session. And this was really to kind of consolidate the knowledge and experience of um, speakers and attendees who had experience of developing ePortfolios. And it was really to get them together in a participative manner um, and kind of work in small groups to share their ideas and experiences. And we've got some very valuable feedback from both of these, um, both of these elements that will inform our, our ePortfolio framework. So we're currently um, conducting the following elements of the data collection and analysis phase of the project. So we're doing a desk-based review examining current practice. We're evaluating various technology tools and their suitability for ePortfolio usage. And we're also conducting online surveys, firstly to faculty and students to establish their awareness and use of ePortfolios, and then to employers to establish the, the, the extent to which they use ePortfolios or access ePortfolios in their recruitment process. So we created an ePortfolio planning tool that really would be a kickstart to the planning process if anyone was looking to develop an ePortfolio or incorporate it into their course. And it was really a set of, a set of questions um, that need to be considered when actually planning an ePortfolio. And we piloted this tool at a workshop that we held in um, DIT at the Innovation Teaching and Learning Innovations. So we piloted that with, um, with a few participants and they gave us some useful feedback that we've subsequently included in, in, a, in a later draft. So the next steps in the project. So firstly, we're going to complete the collection of data and the resources from the data collection phase of the project. And then we're going to analyze the results of the online surveys to faculty, students and employers. And then we're going to collate and consolidate these results, the resources and the research, which will then inform the ePortfolio framework. This will then result in the creation and development of guidelines, exemplars, resources and training materials. And then we will launch the ePortfolio framework and the set of approaches and report resources on the ePortfolio Hub website. So we feel that there, were, there are certain elements um, that have impacted and will impact locally and nationally. So firstly, hosting the ePortfolio conference, ePortfolios in Ireland, what now, where next? This really provided attendees with an opportunity to network, discuss, share and showcase their work that they're doing with ePortfolios. And then from that, we shared the recorded presentations and resources from the conference on the ePortfolio Hub website. And this meant that it was available for viewing by a larger audience. We will provide access to a comprehensive set of ePortfolio resources that will be available on this website for students and academic staff who want to develop their own ePortfolio or incorporate an ePortfolio into their programmes. So we'll collate, develop and share of guidelines and exemplars for use by students and academic staff when developing an ePortfolio. We'll provide guidance on the introduction of an ePortfolio into an academic programme and we'll provide guidance on the various uses of an ePortfolio from, from the terms of teaching, learning, assessment, reflection and as a showcase. And we'll also do an evaluation of current technology approaches and their suitability for ePortfolio usage and then provide guidelines for using the various systems. So how did our project develop when compared to our original proposal? So there was a delay in the start of the project from January to March, which meant that one of the first um, deliverables that we had to focus on and throw ourselves right into was organising the ePortfolio conference. So that was held in March. And um, 
the data collection has, has kind of occurred uh, during and after that um, conference. And we're currently in that phase of collecting the data and analysing that data to inform the framework. There are a few slight changes to the original project proposal in terms of the collaboration envisaged. So people, who were, people, people that we would like to have developed into programme teams weren't available at that time. Um, so the terms of the, the, the type of collaboration that we got involved in was just slightly different. Um, so the steering group and myself as project coordinator, we worked closely and collaborated closely to achieve the project outcomes. And that involved a lot of weekly meetings via Blackboard collaboration so we could record the sessions and occasional face-to-face -face as well. So these meetings, emails and, and sharing of resources online, this really helped to, to, collabor to, to increase the collaboration between the, the members of the steering group. Staff from each of the institutions worked very closely together to organise the hosting of the ePortfolio conference. And through that conference, we gathered a lot of useful information, particularly from the collaborative and participative elements, which were the presentations, the various workshops, the video interviews, the um, think tank sessions and the feedback survey. And we've also gathered a lot of inform useful information from circulating of the online surveys to the various faculty, students in higher education and employers. And we received very valuable feedback from workshop participants on the ePortfolio planning tool. So what changes would we make to improve the impact of our ePortfolio conference? So there were just a few that we thought of. Um, when looking at the timing of the conference, the conference was held from, it was, it was between St. Patrick's weekend and Easter. So that was a time when a lot of academics would have been on holidays. So I think the, the attendance rate of the conference um, was kind of impacted with that, with a lot of people maybe being on holidays. And also the, the logistics of some of the technical elements of, of setting up the event was kind of affected by that as well, with people being on holidays. Recording all the sessions at the conference um, we recorded the keynote addresses and the morning presentations, but in hindsight, if we were to do it again, we would try and record all of the afternoon sessions, particularly the workshops and the think tank sessions, because even with flip charts and notes, it's impossible to just to retain all of the information from those sessions, and there was a lot of valuable discussions and feedback from that. Live streaming the conference would have been very useful in terms of extending the impact of the conference to a wider audience and um, making it, opening it up to more people that were unable to attend on the day. And earlier ethics approval. Um, we needed ethics approval for the data collection phase of the project and there was a delay in obtaining that. So we didn't have it in time for the actual project or the conference itself which meant that there were, there were a few things that impacted in the data collection that we weren't able to do. And um, sending out the feedback survey, that, that, there was a delay in that. We weren't able to send it out directly after the conference, which I would say resulted in a lower response rate, um, as it was maybe a month after the conference that we did, that we did submit that. Thank you.